Well, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Julie Krawczyk. I'm the director of the Elder Financial Safety Center at the Senior Source. Uh, we offer a variety of programs and services for adults 50 and older looking for a job. And today I'm joined by Be Becca Meteor. Matwire. Matwire. <laughs> so I knew I was going to mess that up. I'm so sorry. No, that's Matwire. okay. Who's the owner and administrator of Second um, Second Family Home Care. So I am actually going to turn it over to you, Becca, to tell us all about your company and yourself and uh, what older adults can expect if they're searching for a job in um, home care. Well, um, I'm Becca Matwire, as uh, Julie said. I own Second Family Home Care. Um, uh, Terry Wozniak is going to be joining us soon. Um, she's the supervisor that in the office with us. And just to give you a little background on um, the people we have working for us. Um, so I'm the administrator. Um, Terry is the supervisor. We have Serena Rockwell, who is our director of marketing. So she's out in the field most of the time. Uh, Skylar DeBrun is our alternate administrator. And he does um, the back office uh, payroll invoicing, that kind of stuff. And then we have an RN on staff to uh, Simi, who is wonderful. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, caregiver jobs for seniors. Um, we Our pay rates start at $11 an hour. We have flexible hours. Um, <laughs> And as far as experience, it really just needs at least one year caregiving, either in a professional capacity or taking care of a family member or loved one. And a little bit about our capabilities. Uh, we offer companionship services. We offer personal assistance services, which um, is more of a hands-on type um, caregiving where we would maybe help them with bathing or, um, you know, getting dressed, that kind of thing. Um, at Alzheimer's dementia care, because some of our clients do have dementia. Um, also, we offer short-term recovery services. So we may have a client that I went into the hospital and went, then goes to rehab and it's is time to come home, but just can't do everything by themselves. Um, so we offer that. And then we also offer a tra travel companion services, which is a pretty cool gig for anybody that gets that. Uh, we have clients that are elderly and they want to travel um, to a different state or fly to see, uh, you know, to a family reunion or something, and they just can't do it all by themselves. So we'll, uh, have a caregiver that can go with them and get them to the airport, fly with them, um, you know, do whatever they need to do while the person's there. So that's kind of a cool gig if you can get it. Um, uh, a little bit on the companionship services. So that could be, you know, playing games or with them or puzzles, going for walks, uh, reading to them. Sometimes their eyesight's bad. They just want the paper read to them or maybe a devotional. Um, and then just taking care of stuff around the house, um, pets. Also remembering life's journey. Um, sometimes we will kind of journal that for them uh, as we just visit with them and they tell us about their past lives and especially people with Alzheimer's, they really enjoy, uh, they can a lot of times remember, you know, the memories early on and not necessarily the more current memories. Um, and we encourage interaction with them. If they need help with something, um, you know, making doctor's appointments or something, we can do that too. And then um, outings and transportation, we do um, have caregivers, patient, to family events, even helping learn how to use various technologies. You don't have to know all the technologies yourself, but we do have some seniors that work for us that, you know, are tech savvy and can maybe help somebody else out. Um, if you're not tech savvy, that's, that's not a big issue either so um, we also offer light housekeeping cooking light housekeeping I've listed the the duties there that that could include um, we do meal prep sometimes it's cooking for them if they're unable to cook themselves sometimes it's cooking with them um, and you know it's making sure they're getting a healthy meal and maybe sometimes we'll even if we're there for a short time we'll uh, 
uh, do like a crock pot so that they can, you know, have it for dinner later that night or something. And uh, right now we're offering a thousand dollar signing bonus for new hires. It's very simple. After the first 500 hours work, you get 250, 250, 250, uh, up to a thousand. And um, and that's pretty much it as far as um, as by presentation. So, Julie, if you wanted to take it back over and um, see if anybody wants to have an open discussion or whatever comes next. Sure. So let's talk a few minutes about um, what is the process if someone is interested in the job. Um, where would they start? Okay. Well, first they would call Terry Wozniak, and um, let me bring her on just a second. Terry, I can see my picture, but I can't see my Put face. All right, so let's just give them a minute to get this worked out. We are talking with um, Second Family Home Care. They have companionship jobs available, and we're going to welcome Becca back now. Sorry about that. All right. Um, is Terry ready? Um, I don't know without me getting up and going over there and I don't want to, you know, okay. disrupt the, the, the well, let's, feed, so. so they would call uh, contact. Oh, there she is. <laughs> okay. Let's get Terry on here. Well, welcome Terry. How are you? Hi, today? I'm good. I'm good. I made it. <laughs> well, we're glad you're here. Welcome. And um, tell us a little bit about if someone was interested in applying for one of the positions, where would they start? Well, we have a website. You can go um, fill out an application. It's uh, Second Family Home Care, Second Family HC.com. And you're able to get on there and then there's an employment tab. You can click on that and open up the application and fill that out. Or you can call me, just call me and we'll talk it. We'll talk about it. We'll, we'll, uh, I'll walk, I'll walk you through it. Sometimes it's harder for the seniors to uh, navigate the website. So I'm here for you. I'm a senior as well. So I can work with them. <laughs> <laughs> and what do you, um, what are some of the qualities that you're looking for in a candidate? looking for somebody that has a big heart that loves to take care of people that that, that it, it does take a big heart to do this so i'm looking for somebody that's dependable that has a car that's uh that's that's willing to work uh, um, and and be there every you know dependable that's the main thing okay exactly. And if there were one piece of advice or feedback over the years of interviewing folks for this type of position, what would you say um, besides having a big heart is the number one kind of qualification? And if or if you exhibit whatever X is, it may be best for you not to apply. Oh, best not to apply. Um, yeah. Well, now I'd like to have somebody that has uh, experience with taking care of people. Now it could be taking care of your mom, your parents, you know, some, some elderly people. Um, but don't, uh, I, I guess the, the people that I don't want is people that, oh, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm well, I, I guess uh, just to add to that a little bit, if it's somebody, um, that, um, doesn't, you know, hasn't ever cared for anybody. Um, <laughs> but, what we've found in the past, we've hired several people that have come through the senior source. And what we've discovered is um, they'll call us. They could uh, for sure, sure call Terry and um, uh, and just even just visit with her a little bit about here's what I've done in the past. This is uh, who I took care of. But but really, as long as oh, they do have to pass a background check, um, the state requires us to do that. So um, and we have some training, online training that we give them that. Um, uh, helps fortify uh, even if they have caregiving experience it we have several online courses that deal with just basic caregiving okay. tasks and then we have online courses that spe specifically with dementia so if somebody um, you know hasn't had a whole lot of experience dealing with dementia we probably wouldn't put them on that kind of a case but um, but like for example Terry why don't you give give the example of um, 
uh, opening we have with uh, Mr. Frank right okay. now. All right. Okay, we do have an opening with a uh, a veteran that we've been taking care of since Becca started this company. Um, he is he has problems getting around with his knees and stuff, but he can do everything by himself. So we go in and we help him with housekeeping and meal prep. Make sure he eats every day. That's one of our main things: is make sure he gets food. It, either we take him out to go get something to eat, or we um, take him to go get groceries. We, there's some the transportation. And housekeeping as well. It's it's four hours a day, twelve to four, Monday through Thursday. And those hours uh, Flex. can be flexible. So um, he can't start anybody any earlier than twelve because he likes to sleep late. That's yeah. <laughs> well, we all look forward to that luxury one day, don't we? <laughs> right. Right. Absolutely. right. Well, let me ask y'all um, if you could just touch a little bit on the um, kind of aging disease space for those who need care, who have dementia or Alzheimer's. Is there any type of training or tips that you offer someone? I know you said you wouldn't immediately put them in that situation if they're not comfortable, but how do you build someone up to be comfortable working with older adults who have an aging disease? Well, those online courses that I talked about, mm -hmm. um, we have them in two separate blocks. So the one block is just caregiving skills and okay. the other block is specifically with dementia and how to deal with uh, if there's behavioral issues or um, resist, you know, kind of educate them on, um, you know, people repeat themselves over and over and over, how to redirect them, mm -hmm. teaches them how to mm -hmm. um understand may put yourself like terry always says um when she's training people on how to deal with people with caregivers that are dealing with people with dementia is put yourself in their lives in their mm -hmm. shoes you know don't try to you know i just told you that you know they ask you know you know where's i didn't take my medicines and you say yes you did i just told you that we don't ever do that we just redirect them and say, well, look, let's, you know, go over here and get some pudding or, you know, what, whatever the redirection might work for that person. So we would train them on that. In fact, we have a guy um, that we got from um, a senior center, an older gentleman, never had worked with somebody with dementia, but he had mm -hmm. done caregiving, mm -hmm. put him on a couple of cases that were just basic companion. And, mm -hmm. and then he filled in for one that had dementia and because of these courses and because of, you, you know, Terry coaching him along, um, he was, I mean, he and he's ended up being with some of our most challenging dementia cases that we've ever had. And he just, he just, you know, blossomed in it without any experience whatsoever. So. Yeah. I think you said something really important, um, talked about uh, being coached along. So for people who may be interested in considering being a home care companion, can you kind of talk about what kind of support will they receive uh, during that process? Um, well, first of all, we're a small agency and we're small on purpose. There's a reason for that. Um, the big, we're not a franchise. I've owned it for eight years started it from scratch and we learned over time terry's been with me for five uh she started off as a caregiver and then came into the office and you know we've she's just been my right arm for five years so <laughs> but it's it's just a matter of taking them and anything that she needs if they need to have a question about that's what we're, we're there for and being with us being a small agency we can do that better than the larger agencies can because um, we get we get a lot of caregivers that come work for us because they work for another large big uh, franchise that just hasn't given them guidance or instructions or uh, or any really any help along the way they just say here's the job go do it you know so mm -hmm. so um what jobs i know you mentioned that you have a current opening uh, from 12 to 4 with some flex hours. What other jobs are available right now with your company? Well, that one, just so you uh, they know, that one's down in South Dallas. We, we're located in Plano, but we service, we don't have a territory. So uh, this gentleman that this job is open, the veteran, it's, um, he's in DeSoto, right, Terry? Uh, Pleasant Grove. 
I haven't grown. Mm -hmm. um, so we've got jobs in South Dallas. We have another job that's north in Frisco. And it's a sweet, sweet lady who has a little bit of, of I, would, I would call it dementia. It's, it's just more of a, you know, short-term memory loss. Just And she does repeat mm -hmm. herself sometimes. But she's in Frisco. She lives with her daughter. Um, her daughter is an eye surgeon in Plano and has been taking her to work with her to her office. And it's just sometimes too much for both of them. So just a couple of days a week. Um, I think, it, you know, this one does start early in the morning um, because she, the doctor has to be at her office. So it's 7.15 in the morning mm -hmm. until, what is it, Terry, 2.30? Mm -hmm. 2.30. 2.30, uh, three, two times a week, at least two times a week. They may expand it once she, if she could get the right caregiver in there. Um, it's a good fit. It's an easy yeah. job. This lady just sits and pretty She's much, a retired nurse. Yeah. She's <laughs> very, she loves to talk and, um, but she doesn't want anybody that's going to call her honey or baby or, uh, you know, she, that's yes. even one of her. They specific. all have particulars that we have to make. Right, right. And we go over that with everybody, mm -hmm. you know, um, and most seniors aren't going to be calling other people, you know, honey, baby, that kind right. of thing. Anyway, um, we've oddly found that the younger girls do that more than the the older caregivers. Mm -hmm. so not, you know, we correct that pretty quick. But, <laughs> yeah. um, but anyway, but it's just really housekeeping and meal prep and med reminders, giving her meds when it's time. So mm -hmm. really just three things, um, you know. And when we talk about housekeeping, it's light, you know, fold the laundry, the, right. put the dishes in the dishwasher, unload the dishwasher, that type of thing. It's yeah. light housekeeping. Yeah. And so we how many, we, I'm sorry. No, I was just going to say, we, we, when we bring the client in and we talk about light housekeeping, mm -hmm. we always tell them, you know, I always say, you know, we don't get down and scrub baseboards or clean out garages, but we're going to do dusting and mopping and, you know, your basic light right. housekeeping. So. What, um, how many positions do you have available right now? Um, right now, well, we have two other positions available other than the two we talked about. But what we're trying to do is we're going to take one, the, the caregiver that's working for the gentleman down south mm -hmm. and put him on his same guy I was talking about that, you know, is really good with people with dementia. Um, mm -hmm. Putting him on on. It's it, he lives in a, a distance. It's a, it's a long drive for him. So um, those two and, and another our phone rings every day. So we I probably turn away more business than than or certainly than I want to because we have staffing issues. So that's one of the reasons we're doing this mm -hmm. and partnering with Senior Source to hopefully get some people. Um, they've, some of the Senior Source uh, people that we've hired have been our best hirees without question. Um, and, well, and getting that older. That. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm very, very really curious are. about that. It, <laughs> well, it, thank you. Uh, the less you don't have, you know, they're, they're they're just raised in a different um, era that they are responsible and they show up for work when they're supposed to. And, and some of these younger people, it's, it's a struggle. So, so we, we get jobs in all the time. And so what we tell people is if you're qualified or if you want to talk to Terry about it and ask her, that's, you know, quiz some more questions. That's fine. But also if, um, if we bring you on and you pass, you know, what the qualifications that you need to have and you pass your background checks and reference checks, we do, you know, ask for even if they're older, you know, job references, we mm -hmm. do want to make sure what kind of person we're bringing on board. Then we put you on the roster and then as the jobs come in, we say, OK, we know, you know, we've got Angela over here, you know, in Carrollton that likes to do this and is available these hours right. is willing to travel whatever distance. Um, and, and we customize the job with the caregiver. So um, it's not like we're just going to send, you know, somebody that lives down in South Dallas, you know, expect them to drive to Frisco, uh, you know, North Frisco for a job that's, mm -hmm. you know, for only four, three or four hours. So. Uh, yeah. I think that's a good point that you touched on a lot of, a lot of us, when we're looking for an opportunity, we're hoping to find one, um, a job or an opportunity, you know, within our community um, for for many reasons. So I'm glad that you brought that up. Mm -hmm. What um, 
when you are thinking about, uh, you know, someone who needs caregiving and the caregiver, what are the qualities that you look for to pair individuals aside from just the location and maybe hours that that person can work or the care, the one who needs the care, the hours that, that they need care? Well, Terry can probably touch on that too, but I, I think one of the things that we do very, very well, Terry specifically does very, very well, <laughs> is matching that caregiver with that client. And so um, I'm not sure if, that, if I'm answering the question right, but. Um, one of the things I do is try to get to know everybody. I go out and I meet the client. I, I spend a lot of time with the caregivers, getting to know them, what, you know, and that helps me uh, put them together, pair them. Yeah. Okay. And also at the, it, when that, once I get in there, I'll work with them as well, you know, tweaking, the, you know, maybe we don't do this. Maybe you, maybe you don't talk so much. Maybe you, maybe you want to cook them this or what, whatever I, I need to do to help them. I want to see them succeed. So that's my main goal with these caregivers is to help them succeed. So I spend a lot of time doing that. And it pays off because it does because the caregiver will last longer with that client. Our, our goal is continuity of care, meaning, you know, you know, we've had some caregivers that have been with the same client for years and because it works, you know, and, and finding that match is very, very important for the caregiver too, because if the caregiver's not happy, the client's not going to be happy. We're not going to be, happy, you know, so, um, and, and we're really upfront with that too. We will, we'll tell them about, you know, okay, we have this job and here's all, here's where they live. Here's what the care needs are. Um, um, here's what, you know, you only, if you need to drive or not drive or, or what you'll need to do. And then they can say, they, I mean, they could still stay on our roster just because we might say we have this job available for them and they like, mm, this is a little too far for me to drive or um, I just, those hours just don't fit with my other schedule mm -hmm. or whatever. And then that's fine. You know, we want to know that we don't want to put you in a, anybody in a job that's, you know, thinking they have to take it just because we've offered it to them. So they could say yes, no, um, ask more information. And if they say no, then, you know, they're still on our roster. They're still our employee. And, um, you know, we still, if we have jobs available that they qualify for, we'd still send them out to them. So to repeat that, because I think that's good information for people to have. If, if you're interested in applying for a home care position with second family, and perhaps they don't have someone immediately in the area where you're looking to work, they're encouraging you to still go ahead and apply. Mm -hmm. um, Absolutely. You could Absolutely. be a good fit at some point. <laughs> Absolutely, yes. It changes every day. Yeah. Well, let me ask you, um, what is the average kind of, or how many, what's the average amount of hours someone's working a week? You talked about the sign-on uh, sign bonus of $1,000, and that's earned $250 every 500 hours. So um, when would someone expect to get their first bonus? Well, we only say 500 hours, um, and quite frankly, we probably would need to reduce that for the senior population, the senior care uh, uh, employee population, mm -hmm. because they usually don't want to work like a full-time job. They don't want mm -hmm. 40 hours a week. But we have jobs that are, and that 500 is based on that or three months of employment. It's kind of like three months or 500 hours, you know, whichever comes first. Um, and that means actively working a job. So we probably should reduce that to, um, uh, actually, I'm looking right now at my desk. It's 250 hours work. The slide I had was wrong. <laughs> uh, 250 hours work uh, for the for each quarter. Um, so if you work full time, that's about that's a month and a half, maybe. If you're if you're working full time, it's about. It a month may take them a little longer to get yeah. there if they yeah. only want to work four hours. Uh, you know, maybe two or three times a week for four hours, and that's a lot of our seniors are are into those kind of you know the shorter shifts, um, um, and you know shorter days too and but we have others we offer uh, what we offer to clients is a minimum of four hour shifts and we do eight hour shifts 12 hour shifts overnights weekends we do live-ins um the travel that i talked about 
Um, so we do everything from the very minimum up to just full time okay. live in. Well, one of the things we do as well is we help the caregiver if they're on Social Security and they're trying to, to ben, you know, to uh, supplement their income by working this. And we'll work with them as only doing, you know, they can only do so many hours, mm -hmm. you know, so we make sure we try to keep them within that hour range so they won't uh, go over on their Social Security. So that's or that's, disability. Uh, yeah, disability. they're receiving mm -hmm. disability mm -hmm. payments that sometimes they yeah. can't work more than X hours or, or earn more than X hours, X dollars a year. Um, and we have several that that and they'll say then they keep track of it. And they'll say, OK, I'm getting close. <laughs> I need to cut back on my hours. So, <laughs> well, and uh, for viewers and uh, future uh, clients who may be in, interested in working with your company, what are some other benefits they can expect? Well, um, we when they're working part time, that that kind of excludes like the PTO, the pay time off, or um, we don't offer any health insurance even for our full time caregivers. It's it's just too expensive, and they have to pay half, and then I. I would do it. I pay half, but uh, they just, most people, it's just so expensive. They can't, mm -hmm. they can't afford it. But, um, but most of the seniors are already on Medicare. So a, um, a health benefit is not, uh, but we give bonuses throughout the year. Um, when we do these online courses, for example, uh, once they finish them, you know, we'll, we'll get, we'll send them like a $50 Walmart card when we're finishing it. Um, if they go above and beyond something on a job, um they really you know really com are consistently dependable and consistently perform then we'll you know we do little bonuses we get christmas bonuses at the end of the year and if they refer another caregiver to us mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah they can make like 200 dollars yeah. when they do that so we've got a lot of incentive type yeah, wonderful. yeah. well is there anything that you uh, want to share that you haven't been able to share so far um I can't think of anything specifically other than just to reiterate um, and and I know I'm biased because it's my company, <laughs> but I, I really think we are, we're on, we're on top of our game and we're ahead of the competition, if you will, other home care agencies because of the way we treat our people and because of the way we treat our clients and we get, we have a really good reputation out there as far as uh, referral business. We get lots of referrals from doctors and geriatric doctors, from neurologists that are treating people with dementia, um, referrals from rehab centers. Um, it, which so usually those are little short term cases just to get them back up on their feet. So I just think, you know, that's, that's about all I can say is bragging about ourselves is that <laughs> we've um We've just got a good reputation out there because because we're sincere, we're faith based, and we just take we believe in our hearts and taking care of people, and we're not doing it for the money. Um, and caregivers aren't doing it for the money either because the pay's <laughs> not really high. But uh, it's it just takes a big heart, and I think I think we I know we have that. So. Well, you mentioned earlier if uh, it was hard to navigate the website for any reason that those who are interested in the position could call Terry. So Terry, what yes. is your phone number? 972-347-0700. All right. Extension 2. 972-347-0700. Extension 2. Excellent. And then oh, I see you what? already have the um, the website for employment up there i do and now i'm going to add terry's phone number okay. does that look correct terry yes that's it that's excellent it. Mm -hmm. so before uh, we end today i'll just see if we have any um questions so you did touch on this earlier but let's go over this again what counties or area do you serve um, we, so we're not a franchise, so we, franchises have territories and they can only do certain amount of zip codes within that franchise that they bought. We're not a franchise, so we're based in Plano, but we have cases down South as far as DeSoto. Um, and then we have cases as far North we go, the farthest North we go is really, um, it's Collin County, Dallas County, and, um, 
Denton County, but not Denton County up like where Denton is. Um, <laughs> we don't really go that far, but we have a sister agency up there that's a good friend of mine that, that uh, started her business same time I did. So she gets people that, you know, want a job down this, you know, don't want to go that far. Then she sends them to me and mm -hmm. we do the same thing. If they did want to go, if they were in, you know, far Denton County, you know, we could send them to her. Wonderful. All right. Let's see here. Do we have any more questions? You can drop your questions in the chat. And I want to just, um, while we're waiting to see if we have any other questions before we end, I just want to go over a couple other, couple of things, couple of recaps. So uh, the first recap is that there are part-time and full-time opportunities. You have several openings right now and uh, individuals can go to, I want to get it right, secondfamilyhc.com, click the employment tab, mm -hmm. apply online or they can call Terry directly at 972-347-0700, extension 2. And there's a sign-on bonus. So after <laughs> so many hours, you get a bonus. And the more hours you work actively, I heard that, working mm -hmm. actively a job, <laughs> you can continue to um get that bonus. So I think that's very exciting. And then um, healthcare would be something um, that you'd have to invest in um, yourself. But with older adults, like we talked about, a lot have Medicare. So that's usually not a problem. And then there are a lot of other incentives and opportunities throughout the year. All right. Well, I don't see any other questions. So I want to just thank you all so much for being a part of our live broadcast today. Mm -hmm. And um, we look forward to continuing to support the work that you do. And we hope that there are individuals. I hope your phone, Terry, is just ringing off. Uh, the hook yeah. For I um, caregivers. And I hope, Becca, your phone's ringing off the hook for jobs. And so there you go. There it already is. There it is. We need, we need the caregivers. Come right. on. <laughs> well, we've enjoyed our time with you today. And we uh, really appreciate you. Um, working with us and we look forward to connecting soon. I hope you'll have a wonderful day. You Thanks too. for having us. Thank you, Appreciate everyone. <laughs> All right. Thank you.